greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Stand up, Bible Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verses 1 to 18. In verse 1, uh, Agrippa uh, said to Paul, uh, now you have permission to speak for yourself. And then uh, uh, Paul held out his hand and began his defense. And uh, Paul had done this quite many times in his life. He stood before councils, he stood before governors, he stood before mobs, before the Sanhedrin. So many times he was put on trials. And so um, now Paul was uh, approaching this trial in a very different way. And uh, for uh, the second time and the final time he shares his conversion story. What happened in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 um, uh, Paul shared it with the Sanhedrin in uh, chapter 22 and now for the final time he's sharing his testimony in chapter 26 and um, he says um, in verse 2 regarding all the things that have been accused of by the Jews King Agrippa I consider myself fortunate because uh, um, I can make my defense to you because you know uh, all the customs and all the controversial issues um, of the Jews so uh, therefore I just ask you to please uh, listen to me patiently now Paul was addressing three major issues one thing was he was showing that uh, the Lord had changed him the transformation that the Lord had given him the three parts of what Paul was speaking here one thing his life before conversion second thing his conversion how the Lord met him and finally thirdly uh, how the Lord had commissioned him to do his work the second aspect that Paul was dealing was he was a witness for um, the people there and he was also a witness to King Agrippa this was what uh, God had told him that uh, you will stand before kings you will stand before uh, peoples as my witness so he was standing as as the chosen vessel of God and um, and not just that uh, thirdly he was also giving them a chance to be born again or he was also giving them the gospel in a very clear way that as we read uh, through we can understand and uh, he begins his testimony in verse 5 he says um, they know because they have known me from the past time they are willing to testify according to the strictest uh, party of our religion i lived as a pharisee now uh, when he says they know he was telling that he was uh, born and brought up in tarsus uh, that was far from Jerusalem, but all the way from Tarsus, in order to be educated under Gamaliel, uh, in order to be uh, educated in the law and uh, to be trained as a rabbi, he had left his uh, uh, own place, Tarsus, and he had come to Jerusalem. So this shows the eager earnestness his parents had uh, in order to train uh, Paul. So it was it was not an easy thing. From the beginning, Paul had sacrificed so much and Paul had said no to the normal way of life in order to be educated in the law. And uh, so he says, uh, you know, people here know uh, how much I have been sacrificing in the past in order to live Jewish religious life in Judaism. And he says, I've lived a very strict life, uh, uh, like the strictest sect, uh, the Pharisees. Many a times we just throw away uh, the Pharisees. Uh, um, it is, it, it's nothing wrong when we throw them away for their duplicit nature, their hypocrisy. But when we see their strict discipline, there is something we need to really observe and we also need to emulate. Uh, uh, their trust was on their dis uh, discipline, but then our trust being on the Lord, we have to be definitely people who can be more disciplined and more devotional than the Pharisees. And uh, he says that uh, he, he had worked hard and he was also living a very disciplined and a strict life. And um, after that, in verse 6, he says, and now I stand here because of the hope uh, in, in the promise made by God to my ancestors and uh, all the 12 tribes, uh, they they attain and they live very carefully in order to attain this hope. Day and night they serve the Lord. Now, when he's talking about 12 tribes, already 10 tribes have been totally or uh, the northern Israel has been totally dispersed. Uh, but uh, um, we see that uh, though they were scattered, uh, there was a line that was traceable uh, between uh, uh, these Israelite lost tribes. Uh, and it has been almost seven 
700 years uh, uh, by the time these people have been scattered by the Assyrians. And yet he says all these 12 tribes are still uh, believing this promise. In other words, in uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 36 and James 1, 1, uh, we see a link to this uh, scattered uh, uh, children of Israel. So uh, these people were all also looking forward with this hope. And uh, the only difference between them and uh, Paul was, Paul believed that the Messiah whom they were looking forward had already come in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the only difference that Jesus was the Messiah. He died, he rose again. Uh, so th this was the only difference. And uh, he says this this is the reason why um, uh, we, we, we are at uh, different terms. Uh, and uh, he says, uh, your majesty, um, why, why, why do these people think that it is unbelievable that God can raise somebody from the dead? So he's talking about the capacity of God. And uh, he also says um, about his past life. And he says, I was definitely against uh, this Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, you, you, you want to know my religious life? I was very religious, very committed, very dedicated, very disciplined. But what was I doing? I was uh, subscribing to the murder of people, uh, the persecution of people. I was hurting people. I was injuring people without knowing the truth. I was living in self-righteousness. So he says that all his past was totally, totally rotten, though it was religious. And then uh, uh, he says, I forced people, I dragged people, I pulled them out of synagogues, I forced them to blaspheme God. Um, no, this was the horrible life that he thought was actually religious. And uh, now he talks about the second part and he says, uh, once while I was tra traveling to Damascus uh, on this same errand uh, to persecute uh, the apostles and the disciples there, there the Lord Jesus met me. And when the Lord Jesus met me, then um, uh, because of, the, of his brilliance, then uh, I had lost my sight and he narrates what all happened. And uh, he, he talks about the supernatural encounter he had with God. And when he talks about this encounter with God, he doesn't tell that it was his choice. But he definitely says that it is God's choice. God came in and God interfered and God saved me. And it was, it's, it's just absolutely God's working. So he gave all the credit to God. And, um, and then uh, he say, he said that the Lord commissioned him. So uh, his life before conversion was a, a rotten life, though on the outside it was a whitewashed wall. And uh, his conversion was because of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus came. It was not Paul's initiation, but it is Jesus' initiation. And uh, thirdly, we see uh, the Lord Jesus commissioned Paul and he said in Aramaic, it was a slang that uh, they spoke in those areas of Hebrew. And he spoke in Aramaic and he said, uh, Saul, Saul, uh, um, why do you persecute me? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And uh, he says, uh, you are hurting me. It is hard to kick against the goats. Hard to, hard to kick against the goats was uh, um, a very common uh, Greek terminology in those days. Uh, wherein uh, it, it would be like uh, to show resistance. And uh, so uh, he, uh, the Lord Jesus was telling him, why do you fight against me? You can't fight against me. Immediately Paul gave in. And uh, then we see the Lord's commission in verse 18. He says, get up, stand up on your feet and you will be taught uh, what you have to do. I have uh, uh, made you as uh, a witness uh, to draw people from darkness to light, to draw people from the power of Satan so that they may receive the forgiveness of sin and share among the those who have been uh, made as Christians. So uh, we see that Paul's disciplined life, Paul's uh, religious life was very good, but it did not change his heart and it made him only a violent person. But when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, everything was transformed and uh, uh, he was commissioned by the Lord. And now he was standing in order to just fulfill that commission, commission for which uh, uh, the Lord had called him. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the life of Paul. Help us also to know our commission. Help us to know, Lord, how much you've invested upon us in order to know you. Lord, help us to live with great discipline not just religious lives. Help us to lay our lives, O oh Lord, uh, on the altar and struggle to fulfill all your mission and your vision that you have towards us. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.